happy to win. I just told the team, I mean, we've won four in a row, and it's not easy to do. It's not easy to win a game, um, and I'm really proud of them. They kept in it. They won the game at the end. I mean, if you look at the box score right here, we had 30 first downs. They had 10. I mean, we had almost 450 yards. They had 200. Um, I thought we were sloppy today on offense. And if you look at this, which you can't, you'd think we would have won the game by 28 points, but we didn't. So we have stuff to clean up. Um, but I'm proud of them. We found a way to win. It's four in a row. We got a short week. We got to turn it around. I thought UConn had a good plan. I thought they played hard. It, we, it's a game we should win when we play. Um, and then that's exactly what I told the team. So we, we got to clean that game up fast because there were certainly some mistakes made, but the production's there. It's just the little things. It felt like a, a key moment of a penalty or a key turnover. I mean, at the end of the half, we should have went up, at least went up with a field goal there, and then you get the ball back at halftime, and then you run away with this game. We, just, we kept UConn in the game. I mean, it's as easy as that, and that's no disrespect. We kept UConn in the game. We made the game way closer than it should have been. Ultimately, we won the game, which is what we should do when we play UConn. And I say that with no disrespect, but when we play them, that's the expectation. Coach, congrats on the win. Just take me through that final conversion that Castellanos had on fourth down with five to go. Just tell me about the play call and what you guys were deciding to. Yeah, when we went forward on the, four, on the fourth and five, um, we wanted to put the ball in his hands. Um, I thought we did a good job in that possession of eating up the clock. I thought he did a better job of taking it down to one. Um, but we wanted to keep the ball in his hands. And it was a design quarterback run. It popped, popped through. And so good job by the O-line, good job by Thomas to seal it. I just want to ask about the sort of comfortability about going for it on fourth down against a team like UConn. Is that sort of the, the play design for this week against a weaker defense? No, it's, we're going to be aggressive. I think we've went for it probably the second most out of any team in the country. And we're going to go for it on fourth down. And there's some mistakes that are probably going to be made, but there's some key fourth downs that we've converted to win games. And it's kind of going to be that way. We got a really good old line. We got strong backs. We have a quarterback who can keep the ball. Probably, if you remember, when we threw the interception, uh, that we, had a, we, had a, we had the ball across the 50. And we had third and 10. I would have liked to have gotten five there or four there to put it in a fourth and manageable. We didn't, so then I went for it on fourth and 10. I think it would have been around a 50-yard field goal. So I, I think we could have coached that better on third down to get us into a better fourth down. I was disappointed with myself on that, to be very honest with you. Um, but the other ones in the game, I was going to go for it. We're going to be aggressive, and I, we're like over 700, 70% on fourth down this year. So that's not a UConn plan. I did the same thing against Florida State on the minus 35, and we'll continue to do that. Coach, at the start of the second half, yeah. kind of woven into all of that. Yeah, Thomas wasn't feeling well at the half. He was in with the sports med people. Um, and Emmett was ready to go, and I'm proud of him. And that's what I said to the team. He was ready. He's practiced really hard. He's developing. He's turning into a, a better quarterback. Um, everybody had total trust in him. You could see how everybody was happy in the locker room when I brought him up. I mean, he's one of us, and he's done a lot here. And he's in a tough situation, and he's handled it with first class. And there's going to be a time when he's got to start, and he's going to be ready. And that's what I love about him. And I'm really, really proud of him because uh, he did lead us down on that drive, which we should have had points there too. I was going to say, just on that drive, again, you didn't get points, but if he ever has to come in in a situation again, how much confidence do you guys now have knowing, or does the team have knowing, I mean, he can do what he just did? I've never lost confidence in Emmett, neither has the team, because of the way he prepares. And this could have went two ways, right? Emmett could have walked away, like some kids are doing right now. And he could have said, I'm not playing. I'm going to enter the transfer portal or do whatever people are doing. But instead, he didn't. And it was hard on him. And he's been a great teammate. And he comes to practice with energy. He, he gets better when he's in in practice. We were not going to skip a beat, and we won't skip a beat if he has to go into the game. The team has confidence in him. The coaches have confidence in him. And I certainly have confidence in him, and I'm proud of him. Jeff, could this almost be the best of both worlds for you getting back to league play, that you got the win, but like you said, there's a lot you got to clean up? Yeah, it's always nice to correct things when you win a game. I mean, I think it's a valid point. I mean, I wish we played cleaner, but now we can turn on the tape and get on them. I mean, it's really, we haven't lost in five weeks because of the bye week. And we got to go hard, and we got to look close at the film. And I got to look close at some of the calls that I made, too. Um, but that's football. Win or lose, you got to show up and do it again. And the beauty of it is, for four straight weeks, our guys have found a way to win. And I don't care who you're playing. This wasn't going to be like, because UConn beat us last year, it was just going to be a rollover walk in the park. 
you got to go beat teams. And the ball bounces a funny way sometimes, and, and you get a penalty here and a missed opportunity here. And we could have went backward because they, they took momentum a few times, but we kept fighting. So we'll watch the film on a short week, fix some stuff that we need to, and we'll play better against Syracuse. One other note, what was it like having Coach Coughlin in town? Yeah, that, that was special. It was special for me. It was special for the team. Um, he hadn't been back in a really long time. I've kept trying to get him here. And, you know, they honored that 93 team today and um, I think the 83 team too. And I think that was special for him to be part of that. Um, I mean, he's a legend around here. In my eyes, he's one of the greatest football coaches to ever coach the game. I mean, clearly gets the job at Jacksonville. I think he still has the highest winning percentage there. Goes and wins two Super Bowls for the Giants. Um, and, and he does great things. Started the J Fund and has always given back. Um, he's a BC man and it was... It was a really cool 15, 20 minutes that he talked to the team. And I hope the players appreciate it as much as I did. So thanks to Coach Coughlin for being here. Thanks for all those alumni for coming back. And we got to keep this thing going. Just comment on Jaden Skeet. He was a kind of new face in the crowd today. Yeah. Um, Skeet's a guy that keeps showing up. He shows up in practice. I think he's really, really talented. And I'm glad he got his moment today. I think he has some of the best hands on his team. He's got good length. He can accelerate. I think he's got a chance to be a really special player as he develops. Credit to Coach Wyatt for getting those young guys ready. Lewis had to come out of the game with an injury. Um, and then Skeet went in. And uh, I thought he played really, really well. In other lines, um, you know, uh, give Joe Griffin credit. I thought he played a really good game today. And um, Jaden Williams is going through some a, a pretty difficult situation um, with a loss in his life. And the way he came out and played today, I thought Jaden, I think Jaden deserves a game ball for the way he played today and the way he battled through, and I'm really proud of him, and I know his family is too. Coach, uh, there were plays where Ozzie gets out into traffic, Mahogany was pulling and gets out alone. Uh, I know Drew Kendall had a, had a couple blocks where he's into the, the second level. Uh, just how is the offensive line continuing to develop their skill set opening up for runs when you get those guys outside and they're not just operating you know, inside the box? Yeah, they're athletic guys. When you have guards that can pull like Kyle and, and um, Christian, and then when you have a center who can do the same thing, you got real athletic guys that can move. Um, so it's not just zone schemes. There's a lot of gap scheme. There were some plays we got on the perimeter tossing the ball out there today. Those guys work really hard. They're gelling as a group. They continue to get better. We got to clean up, clean up some of the penalties. Um, I thought we had more penalties than we did. Just looking, we only had four. They just came at crucial situations. But it's also it's it's good scheming, good coaching. I think Chud and Shimmy do a great job, and Chud spends a lot of time in that run in those run meetings. And I think Coach Applebaum's a really good offensive line coach, and he's only been better since he's been back. So give those guys credit. In building off that, Jack Conley, um, I know our tight ends number just to get him, uh, so we wouldn't have to check in, but. Uh, Having him on the line too, how much did that kind of add to it? Just having the extra offensive lineman. I know that was in, uh, you know, last week. Uh, yeah, we we were shorthanded today at tight end. George was out, um, and we wanted Jack to play that position, which, you know, we put an eligible number on him, so you have to cover him. And there's a threat of pass. I mean, Jack's a really good athlete, and um, another guy that you're proud of, right? The guy who was a starter for us in every game last year, and. We bring in some guys and he's a backup and he's another guy in, in this world of college football where he could have kind of just left and been on his own, but he didn't. He, he, he stuck through and he's fought. Now he's playing a ton of football and he's a really good player. And he's another guy I'm really proud of. I'm proud of that offensive line. I mean, we've run the ball really well. More along those lines, if you think about last year versus this year, do you feel like the run game was ultimately the main difference this year? I think the run game's been the main difference. I think protecting the quarterback's been a main difference. I think our whole line last year was it was a different group in there every week, and there were guys that weren't ready to play. I mean, it's hard to, it's hard to play football when you do that. But they fought. We wound up winning the game down the stretch, and then we got a ton of guys with experience. And now, I mean, how many yards did we rush for? Over 200. So we rushed for over 200 yards. We rushed for 246 yards today. We rushed for over 300 yards in the last two weeks. So now we're one of the top rushing groups in, um, in the country. I thought what Thomas did in the second half, I thought he threw the ball better, and he made some key plays with his arm. Um, and he needs to continue to do that. And we need to coach him better, make sure our pass game is efficient, because I thought early on it was a little bit off. Um, but if you watch, UConn was up in the box, and they were, they were trying to stop the run with just about every single guy they had, and they were pressuring. And we still ran the ball for almost 250 yards. So that's a, that is the biggest difference, for sure. Just on that passing note, uh, at, at the end of the first half, Castellanos took a deep shot into some double coverage. 
um, you know, could have gotten points on the board there, and that was a missed opportunity. Can you just tell me about what are you saying about that decision? Yeah, I, I didn't really, I didn't have a detailed conversation with him yet. I grabbed him right after the play. That situational awareness, you can't, you can't do that. You can't throw the ball up. Um, we're, we're in field goal range. It's the red zone. We have one timeout left. Um, throw it out of bounds or run it. You can't throw a pick down there. That's inexcusable. At the same time, he's a sophomore, and he hasn't been in a lot of situations like that. So the key now is to learn from that so he doesn't do it again because that is points. And that's obviously we need to coach him so he understands those situations, which we work on a lot. And he's got to execute that better, and he knows it. And I was proud of the way that he fought back because I thought he played a really, really good second half throwing the football. We hit some big third down conversions and then obviously finished it with his legs at the end. Yeah, what was the mood like in the locker room? Did you guys seem gratified to kind of get some quote unquote revenge or did they just seem content? Nothing, what was their mood like? They, it looked like we won a game and they put in a lot of work to do that. Um, I don't know if revenge is being talked of down there. Uh, like I said earlier, I expected to win this game. They expected to win this game. When we play UConn, we expect to win. And that was my message to the team. You guys asked me if I needed motivation. No, I don't need motivation. And that's we're a different team this year. They're a different team this year. Both teams showed up. Did we play great? No, but we found a way to win. So they're happy and they should celebrate. They just won four games in a row. His comment on Thomas, he stared down that blitz and got the ball out to Alex. That was a big touchdown, but I thought the big thing, that kid was coming on him hard. Yeah, it's, it's a good observation. And if I remember clearly, they were in a zero pressure. And when you're in a zero pressure, you usually don't account for the back. So the edge blitzer, he failed to peel or rather take that back. So that's like, Rich, imagine you're running full speed at me right now. Yeah. And then I know that I got the back free, but he stood in there and he hit him with a big play. Um, yeah, but that, that was a huge play in the game. Good observation. Coach, defensively, um, you know, you guys had a couple of different looks in there, too, that, that you threw at Roberson. I know there were times that, like, the linebackers were stacked behind the, the defensive edges, and, you know, you, 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 had, uh, you were fading defensive tackles back in the coverage or something like that. What were some of the things that you did that just kind of seemed like they confused UConn and, and maybe held them off, uh, in, especially early? We were actually pretty simple today, to be honest with you. I mean, just looking at his stats, he was 11 of 24, which is a good good percentage for us on defense, and he threw for 130 yards. Um, at one point, I looked up, and they had about 50 yards. Um, we actually kept it pretty simple today. Um, it was working. We felt good about it. We pressured a little bit more later on in the game on third down. Um, probably could have pressured a little bit more on the second to last drive, if you look back on it. But we were pretty vanilla on defense today. The guys played hard. They played with great fundamentals and technique. I felt like we weren't getting off blocks early enough in the game. Um, really, in the first half, they scored off that sudden change. Besides that, there was really no drives, no points. I didn't think we were tackling great early on in the game. I thought we did better at the end. They hit the one big stretch. We got cut out inside. I think our nose got reached, and then our safety missed a tackle in the open field. And it was a touchdown. So that's probably the most disappointing run, thinking back on it. Um, so we'll have to work on that. Just want to hear more about Kai continuing to establish himself as sort of the lead back in this group and just a touchdown machine. It's so dynamic between him and Castellanos. Can you just tell me a little bit about that? Yeah, and Broom, because Broom, Broom played really good today. And he's a shifty guy. He looked faster today. He's finally a little bit healthy. Um, yeah, but Kai's a big back. He's hard to tackle. And he's starting, if you notice, he's keeping his shoulder pads down and he's running through arm tackles. And then with the threat of Thomas pulling the ball or Broom being in the game, is a little bit of a different pace. Um, Kai's a really good player. He runs really hard. And at the end of a game, when you get to the fourth quarter, those D tackles, if they're going to play him as many plays as they did and we have 40 minutes of possession, they're just going to be tired and they're going to get worn out and they're not going to tackle them. So you're going to see this team's going to get better and stronger as the game goes on because you're going to wear, you're going to lean on people and they're going to get tired. And then we got to keep pushing and pushing. And that's why we've been able to run the ball really well at the end of the game, right? We do one more, anyone? Good. All right, thanks a lot, guys. I appreciate it.